and welcome. It's Wednesday, which means only one thing. It's time to improve your English. So hello, my name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com, where you can find some free courses to improve your English. And if you prefer listening to improve your English, go and listen to our podcast over at inglespodcast.com. And keeping me company today, I'm delighted to welcome <laughs> Lynn from putitlikethis.com. Hi, Lynn. Thanks, Craig. Hi. Uh -huh. um, so um, I'm Lynn. I'm from putitlikethis.com. I'm uh, exclusively an online teacher and uh, I make tailor-made courses to help my students feel comfortable speaking English and to find their own personalities, their own voices in English. That's my, my aim. Um, so if you want to know more, you can go to my website at putitlikethis.com. And we have our faithful, faithful audiences. Fabiana is already there. Hi, Fabiana. Hema. Fantastic, and Emma and Christine. Yeah, and Heidi. Great. And Heidi. <laughs> well done. We recognize our old faithfuls. You keep coming back all the time. I think it's great. I really feel that we, um, if one of us wins the lottery, we'll have to have a big get together somewhere. Yeah. Whoever yeah. wins the lottery can uh, buy everybody tickets and we can meet up somewhere for a Facebook Live in person. <laughs> Problem Party. is, they're from all over the world. So uh, South America, Central America, Europe. Exactly. That's why I say one of us has to have a big lottery win so we can afford to pay for the tickets for everybody. <laughs> With your private jet. Yeah, we can yeah. fly them in. That's great. Uh -huh. So today we're going to look at a subject that we've called major influences. So people who have influenced you and people you have been influenced by. We're going to speak about celebrities, stars, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And we want you to join in with us and give us your opinion. If there are any words that we say, any vocabulary that's new to you and you're curious about, you're interested in, write in the chat and we'll explain these words to you. Mm -hmm. We're doing a different approach, I think, aren't we, this week? Because in, in past times, we've put all the vocabulary up, but sometimes it gets a little bit too much vocabulary. Too heavy. So, so the focus of this class is just for you guys to listen to us and see if you can follow our natural English between native speakers. But as, as Craig says, if there are things that you think you're missing, then put it in the chat and say, hold up hold up, which means wait. stop, wait, hold up. What did you just say? You can say that in the chat and then we'll try to remember <laughs> if we can. And if you are <laughs> joining said, us live, we'll if you're you. watching us live on YouTube <laughs> or on Facebook, uh, let us know where you're from. Um, we'd love to know which country you're from, which city. We've got Johnny here from Bolivia. We've got Soledad from Spain. Cadiz is represented by Jose Antonio. Elaine is with us from Rio de Janeiro. Patricia oh, wow. from Mexico, Consuelo from Colombia. So, so many countries from around the yeah. world, which, uh, which is lovely. really nice to see. That's wonderful. So let's start with this question. What's the difference between an influencer, which you may hear a lot, especially connected to social media, and a traditional star or celebrity or famous person? Mm -hmm. Well, there is a difference. There is. And the thing is, when we were young, Craig, <laughs> not so long ago, but before social media, there was no such thing as an influencer. This idea as being an influencer is a very modern term now, and it's definitely come from social media. Um, I think when we were younger, you, you tell me if you agree with me or not, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were stars who were like film stars or rock stars, music stars. Um, there were celebrities who were often actors and music stars, but sometimes celebrities could be politicians, for example, or members of the royal family or <laughs> any anybody who was famous. 
And, um, and often the stars and the celebrities, they were often in the newspapers a lot uh, or in magazines. So they were photographed a lot by the paparazzi, for example. They were followed by the paparazzi. There was a lot of interest in their lives. And then maybe you liked them and you were influenced by them. But the big difference today on social media is that the influencers in my opinion, they are professional influencers. That's their job. And their job is to try to influence people. And I think in the past, that was a byproduct. Yeah, you were either a famous actor or a musician or a politician. And you were famous, but you had a job. And your yeah. job was not to influence. Influencing people was a a byproduct, wasn't Although it? Although I think some people might argue today that influencers do have a profession, they do have a job, and they get paid a lot of money for influencing the public into buying particular products or following. Yeah, but a it's a, it's a company. professional job, isn't it? I'm exactly. not saying that. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a job. I think they work hard, but the job is to influence whereas in exactly. the past it was a byproduct people, yeah it was a byproduct of just also i don't famous. know if you agree with this lynn but i think mm -hmm. when i think of the traditional movie stars sports stars musicians singers it was focused more around talent they yes, had a particular uh, talent about something whereas some influencers today they tend to specialize in a particular area or we can say niche, N-I-C-H-E, mm -hmm. a particular niche like fashion or food or mm -hmm. something like that. So it's not necessarily a talent that they have. It's a speciality around a particular area. Maybe mm -hmm. that's one difference that we can say. And I'm not going to say that influencers don't have talent, but <laughs> because they, they are talented at influencing people but i think what you mean is that they don't actually have the skill themselves so they might talk a lot about cooking or fashion but they don't design clothes and they don't cook really <laughs> they they sell the the things that's yeah. that that's their it's um, a lot around their image. talent their talent is is marketing isn't it marketing. exactly Selling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we said at the beginning, um, the verb to influence, so you can influence someone or you can have an influence on somebody. So the mm -hmm. particular influencer has an influence on teenagers who play video games, for example. Mm -hmm. And often the verb influence is used in the passive if you are not the influencer, then you can say, I have been influenced by, uh, so uh, I have been influenced by somebody, okay? That happens more in my case, I think. I don't think I influence <laughs> very many people. <laughs> well, I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be surprised. I think we're influencing people right now and helping them to learn English. So well, maybe. in a small uh -huh. way, uh -huh. but we'll, we'll talk a little later about um, people who have influenced us and we'd like to hear from you as well who have you been influenced by but let's mm -hmm. look at a few expressions and, and vocabulary items first there's a phrasal verb to look up to somebody which is similar to admire if you look up to somebody it's a very positive phrasal verb you try to emulate them you um, try to copy them perhaps because they have very positive qualities that you like so that's a useful phrasal verb when you're talking about famous people and influencers if you play football maybe you look up to a particular footballer if you are learning to act maybe you look up to an actor for example you admire that person mm -hmm. emulate well, that you just use the word emulate. Used, emulate yeah. is a very formal word, and it means to to pretend to be the same. So it's kind of like copy, really. Copy is more a colloquial word, and emulate behavior is just a posh way of saying to copy behavior. Uh, to mimic behavior is when you try to... Um, yeah, it's it's another word for copy. They're all copy. synonyms, aren't they? Emulate, mm -hmm. copy, and mimic. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. mimic. 
Mm -hmm. And a role model is also very similar. A person you admire, a person you look up to, a person you try to copy, a person who sets particular standards for you to, to follow. Um, so shall we go to the first question? Who yeah. were your mo role models, Lynn, when you were younger? Well, I think this is... By? But I think this is a more general question first. Before we go to us, let's ask everybody, what type of people are we influenced by? What, what, what people are we influenced by? Because I, I, we, we, I, think, I don't know if you put a banner with the, the answers that we had, but maybe people can suggest, because we've talked about stars and celebrities, but they're not the only people who really influence us, really. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody wants to share who you think you can be influenced by, but there's a lot of professions, aren't there? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And it Did you could make be somebody. Uh, oh yeah, no, I didn't make, but I will make one quickly. So oh, you don't have to. I, I, I got I got confused. I thought we were on the first question, but we're not. No, we're speaking uh -huh. about people we are influenced by. Influence, who and you can be influenced by. Uh -huh. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone famous. It could no. be. A close friend it could be a family member mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so everybody's a little bit quiet at the moment um but i we can maybe go through i'll just tell the people you don't have to make a banner if not but so we said oh you just made one okay yeah. so we'll see what we said before we thought about this earlier yeah we we use the word celebrity somebody who's famous in the news politicians sometimes influence us writers musicians, actors, parents, friends, partners, they're your, like your husband, your wife, uh -huh. um, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, uh, family, a wider family, teachers, social media stars, and of course, the influencers from social media that we talked about before, these people whose job it is to influence people. Mm -hmm. And we, we also talked about different areas that these people can influence in. How do they influence us? And we came so, up with some ideas, Craig. What have you got? You got well, we, we're, I think with dress sense, I mean, obviously not me anymore, but when I was younger, I was influenced by probably by um, singers, I think, by music, the way mm -hmm. um, singers like David Bowie dressed, for example, or a particular pop group that I liked. So that, I think, dress sense and fashion are very similar. Um, music... now, I, had a, I had a very similar experience. And I think it's like when you're younger, isn't it? When you're like a, a teenager or something, and then you, you see your famous pop stars and you kind of want to be like them. When I was at university, so I mean, I was, well, I wasn't really a teenager. I was a, a bit older than a teenager. But I think that's when I got most influenced. My dress sense got influenced by my music tastes. And so I went through a phase where I had spiky hair, a bit punky. <laughs> 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 and it was because I liked all these groups like, you know, Susie and the Banshees. And So you were influenced by the... punk? Sorry? You and, were influenced well, not, by punk? not really hard punk, but, uh, yeah, definitely – my dress sense was influenced by those kind of bands, Japan, you know, it was, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I was definitely not a hard punk. I didn't look like a hard punk, but I did have spiky hair and a bit shaved at the sides. You, you didn't, know, you and, didn't pierce anything. <laughs> no, I didn't pierce anything. No. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so definitely my, my dress sense was probably influenced then, but it was also influenced by music, but also by the other friends. I think when you're a teenager and you're younger, you get very influenced by your friends because you want to yeah. kind of be different, but you want to be the same. Your so peers. I have some pictures of myself and um, my uni friends, some of them I'm still friends with. And we laugh when we see the pictures from university because we saw a really strange pattern. And it was when we started university, when we had just met, we've got a photograph of us and we all look very different because when in England, when you go to university, you change your hometown. So you meet completely different people from different areas of, 
of the UK. So we came from very different backgrounds, yeah? So um, the people that I met at university on the first pictures, you know, we all look very, very <laughs> different. We look like from the families or the social class or the, the areas that we came from at the beginning. And then when we were in the second year of university, <laughs> we all look the same. We all had spiky hair shaved sides, <laughs> <laughs> different types of like, you know, like nearly punk looking. And then it's really funny because now we're all middle-aged, you know, and we've got pictures of ourselves now together and we've all <laughs> gone back to looking very different. Yeah. But when we were at university, we looked all the same. <laughs> which is really funny christine mm -hmm. christine's saying i do really look look up look up to remember two. the two mm -hmm. christine look up two people who invest their time helping people in need especially doctors and nurses engaged in ngos yeah like yeah. doctors without borders me too mm -hmm. i look up to people in medicine definitely doctors and nurses who are severely underpaid in most countries mm -hmm. and anybody who looks after the elderly for example yeah in mm -hmm. homes and and people who do that kind of work i look up to them mm -hmm. i don't know um, mm -hmm. how they how they do it and i have a lot of admiration for them and eduardo mm -hmm. says i'm strongly influenced by my wife yay no, Her opinions nice. have mm -hmm. a deep i am too i'm, I'm influenced by mm -hmm. my wife she does um influence me a lot mm -hmm. positive and way. and me too you know i i think um i think when you i mean well no it's the same isn't it because we've just said that when you're younger when we were younger we were influenced by our friends yeah and 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 i think when i was younger i was influenced quite strongly by boyfriends as well and now as an older person i'm not so influenced in the sense of fashion or dress sense but i do continue to be quite heavily influenced by people that I love. And um, the biggest influence, I think if somebody asks me, what is the biggest influence in your, or who is the biggest person who influences you most? It's probably my husband. Because if you are in a partnership and you really love and respect somebody, you know, like mm -hmm. I, 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 I say very freely, my husband has made has brought out the best in me, I think, you know, like he, he's made me a better person. So yeah, I, a lot of credit goes to my husband. And I also recognize when I'm older, now that actually my parents have influenced me massively. But oh, when I was yeah. a teenager, when I was yeah. a teenager, I didn't want to know. You know, <laughs> it was like when I was a teenager or a young adult, I'm nothing like my parents, not at all. <laughs> no, me, my parents, yeah, now we're completely different. It's surprising then, how much you're influenced by our and parents. And then actually, when you as you get older, I think, oh my God, that I'm my mother. You know, and my father, I'm exactly the same. And also, as you get older, you appreciate. And I think, thank God I'm like them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm really grateful to the fact my mother's been a huge influence on me um, as I've got older. So my, course, my uh, I think you recognize your, your the people around you influence you a lot. For sure, for sure. Jose Antonio, I only use influencers to get information about some topic I need. Mm. For, for instance, restaurants and hotels. Now, that's really interesting to me, Jose Antonio, because you're assuming that the information you're getting from these influences is true and it's honest and the influencer has integrity. And that's very interesting to me because I think there's a very fine line between believing an influencer because you trust them um, and maybe doubting whether the information they're giving you is something they actually believe or whether they're getting commission on the hotel or the restaurant that they're telling you to go to. That's, so that's true, a... because especially because we mentioned before that prof the influences is now a job. Those influences are not really free, really, are they, to give their... I don't know. I don't know whether they're really giving their honest opinion, opinion yeah. or whether they are compromised in some way because they're, they're trying to sell something, aren't they? Some, it's interesting because someone I admire very much who has influenced me as a podcaster, um, he says quite often that when you start to have a presence online, when you start to 
do a podcast or start a Facebook group or start a blog or do a, a live stream like this, you start with two things. The first thing you start with is no audience because nobody's watching. And the second thing you start with is integrity. And you've got to be very careful not to lose the integrity. And you've got to be honest with people and you've got to say and tell the truth because if mm -hmm. you lose the integrity, then you're worthless, really. Nobody's gonna, going to want to, yeah, to know you. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Can I say I'm influenced by some of my family? Yeah, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm influenced by, by my parents. Mm -hmm. And Christine says, I also get inspiration from an Italian girl called Bebe Vio who is setting a great example for many people despite having lost her legs and oh, oh wow oh wow i didn't i have i think i might have heard of that name Bebe that Vio. name rings a bell it rings a bell but i i don't i haven't got a, a face in front of me so i'll write it down and i'll, I'll check that out afterwards uh-huh probably I, pr I presume she's on the internet so we'll find her somewhere. is she is Bebe she's Vio. a wheelchair fencer a fencer is a person who fights with a oh, sword. Oh, really? Uh huh. Um, she's the 2014 and 2016 European champion. Wow. World champion, um, Paralympic champion, um, fencer. How does she? How does she fence with no with no arms? arms? Oh, oh, she's got. Okay, she yeah. She attaches the sword to really? like, her uh, elbow, elbow, and she moves. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow, that, wow I've never, that's amazing. I've mm -hmm. never heard of her, but that's impressive. Mm -hmm. That is impressive. Uh-huh. Yeah. I also okay. feel inspiration. Um I feel I get inspiration. I feel inspiration is, is okay from singers and, and from, scientists. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I get him. I think it's it's more natural to say I also get inspiration from uh -huh. or I singers. feel inspired by. Or I feel inspired by, I that's right. Inspired I feel inspired by. by or I get inspiration from. Uh -huh. put that in the chat so you've got uh -huh. that inspired yeah. by. Uh, singers and scientists, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. uh, of course, Antonio has replied. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to find influencers with good reviews, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. where do the reviews come from? Are they yeah. from other influencers <laughs> or not? <laughs> It's yeah. difficult. It it is difficult, isn't it? And I think also with the because now with the reviews as well, I remember, for example, changing the topic. But when Amazon first came out, the reviews you used to get for products, you know, were fairly reliable, you know, because people yeah. like, especially when it first came out, this ability that you could write your opinion about something. But of course, now I realize, because I, I do look at the opinions on Amazon when I'm buying products, um, but I realize more and more now that it's, you can't really trust the, the reviews anymore because a lot of people are being paid by the manufacturers to, to put reviews. up good reviews. And I have been offered when I've bought a product I've received an email and it said, if you put up a good review about our product, we will give you 20% discount on another product. So you and think, oh, great. That, yeah, I'll they, do that because <laughs> I get 20% off another product. But, you know, it's And they pay people the same, to write it? bad reviews for other companies. Yes, uh -huh, I've heard that too. So that whole thing is getting a little bit... <clears throat> It's not useful anymore, isn't it? At the beginning, yeah. it started to be really useful, but sometimes now it's actually not so useful. Uh -huh. Yeah. Eduardo says your integrity is in no doubt. It would be better to say it's in no doubt. Thank you very much, Eduardo. <laughs> I, uh, I do think about that. I do care about that. Avril saying people can influence others in different ways. It depends on us which way to go. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's an interesting question as well, because I think we had it later in our chat, but we can talk about that one now. It's about like, do you think, Craig, that some people are more easily influenced than others? I'm trying to find the question so that the audience worry. can uh -huh. answer it as uh, well. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I'd be interested to hear what other people think. So 
are people more influenced with another? Yes, I, I think they are. I think people with strong personalities who are very self-assured um, uh -huh. and have strong beliefs are not so easily influenced as um, people who are, oh, I don't know, really, I'm not sure, uh -huh. who are more... Uh, who are not so self-assured and who are not very confident, perhaps. They look to other people for guidance. So I think they're more easily influenced. Do, do you agree? Not completely. Because I think that, for example, people, I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from, right? So I, I, I understand that. And I think on one level, that's true. But I think there's another level because people who are indecisive, in the end, aren't very influenced because the influencer hasn't been successful. If the influencer had been successful, they would give you an answer. But the fact that they don't know what to choose shows that in actual fact, they're not very easily influenced. <laughs> yeah. And the people who seem to know exactly what they want, they give the impression that they haven't been influenced but possibly they have been extremely influenced. Let me, let me give you an example. For example, in, 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 in America, we've seen a lot on the news, uh, and we don't live in America, and, and, and so forgive me if I'm getting it wrong, but the impression that we have in Europe with the whole business of Trump and his supporters, there's lots of news reports that say that his supporters of Trump are absolutely determined and know, like they're very, they seem to be very, very clear about their beliefs and they're, they're not very accepting or tolerant of, of other people's beliefs, but they're very, very firm in their beliefs about what they want, yeah? So they believe things very strongly. For example, a lot of them believe very strongly that the election was unfair, yeah? So they're people who, who seem to know what they want, but then there's lots of other news reports that say it's exactly those people who are being manipulated. Yep. And the, Im By the impression, media. exactly. And then the impression is that actually they're the ones that are being easily influenced. And the people who are more indecisive possibly are not being easily influenced because they're more cautious and they don't believe everything they read exactly or, so that they're, or, they're, to or they're trying the to make their own minds up so do you see what i mean do you I see do, where i'm I coming do. from and uh -huh. i hadn't thought of that i think you're right uh -huh. yeah 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 so it's uh and i think what is absolutely true is that human beings people we as social animals yeah as as human beings it's in our nature to be influenced, yeah? It's in our genetics that we allow ourselves to be influenced because, you know, when they talk about uh, psychology and all of that, they say that we mirror body language, don't we? You know, so if you're mm -hmm. getting on with somebody, you cross your legs or you you, yeah. you do the same thing. Somebody somebody takes a do. drink of water and you take a and drink and mirror, mirror what Ex they're doing to make them feel more comfortable. Exactly. And and we're not aware of that. We're not aware of that. But it's in our genetics that we we want to be influenced by other people because it's what sort of uh, binds us. If we're similar to one another, then we can cooperate with each other, can't we? It's actually a really good piece of advice. If you go on a job interview, for example, and mm -hmm. the person who's interviewing you, the interviewer, is very bubbly and very jokey and very, very active and very, um, um, what's the word? Very um, animated. Enthusiastic or enthusiastic. Uh -huh. If you mirror that and mm -hmm. you are in a similar level of um, behavior, mm -hmm. then they will feel better about you than if you were very flat and very down and very on one level and mm -hmm. vice versa if the person who's interviewing you is very low key and very quiet and you're the same then that person will feel better about you than if uh -huh. you're very hyper so if you can yeah. mirror that in a job interview there's probably a better chance you'll get the job
But, you know, I think, I don't know about you, Craig, but I do that naturally without yeah, I do, realizing. I do, it too. I do it consciously. I do it naturally. I do it, I oh, do you it do it consciously. I just do it, but I realize that I do it naturally. Especially, <laughs> so if somebody's very quiet, then I'll be very especially quiet. Especially when I meet someone for the first time. Because really? I want, I uh, want them to like me, really, and I uh, think that's yeah. very natural. I think it's very natural uh, to want people to like you. So I, mm -hmm. I try to, yeah, I try to um, tap into their personality and try and mirror it. Mm -hmm. Christine's nice saying that to tap, in, to tap into, tap into. A tap is where the water comes out, and if you tap into it, it's to try to get the energy from something else, isn't it? To extract the energy or to exploit the energy of somebody else. Christine's also mm -hmm. got a lovely expression, a double-edged edged sword. Edged so we've, sword. Yeah, put the D on the edge. Reviews can be a double-edged sword sometimes. Yeah, they can mm. be. You've got to be careful with reviews because they can be misleading. Mm -hmm. Misleading. They can deceive you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, excellent. Okay. So where were we? We kind of well, whether we think that we did, I'm sorry, but we no, said, Do you good. think some good. people are more easily influenced than others? Uh, any other ideas? Any, um, Eduardo's got something, uh huh. Go on, can you put that one up there? In the end, mm -hmm. you believe what you want to believe in most cases. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a lot of prejudices and previous opinions, yeah, that's true, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 that, that is true. So sometimes we, uh huh. So, uh, maybe you're suggesting that um, if you want to be influenced, you will admit to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. really and what think. about people who join cults, religious cults or um, some weird kind of cult? I mean, they're heavily oh, wow. influenced by, mm -hmm. by leaders, aren't they? By charismatic yeah. people. Um, and they're very, very easily influenced and then go away mm -hmm. and join a cult somewhere. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, but of course, externally, that, that's the point that I was making before. If you speak to them, they seem to be very sure of themselves. So sometimes I'm, I, I, it is true that I am a little bit wary of people who are too sure of themselves. <laughs> you know, like when somebody seems to have an answer for everything, then um, you, I, I don't know. They don't seem quite so human. They, they, I, yeah, I don't I know. know. I mean. don't feel quite so comfortable with it. You're I suspicious. Like it when, I'm a bit more suspicious, yeah. I think it's quite nice when people are, are open about, you know, for example, if you make a mistake, that you admit you've made a mistake, you know, or if you're quite comfortable with sharing that you're insecure in in one or two areas i think that i think that that's quite nice yeah. <laughs> i like i like my friends to be able to show that uh -huh. i do too let's mm. uh, here's another question for you uh, if you're watching live who were your major influences when you were younger and for what things so we spoke at the beginning about uh, the different ways that you can be influenced with music with fashion um etc by mm. famous people so who were people who influenced you when you were younger and for what kind of things? Let us know in the chat what you think. What about you, Lynn? Who were you influenced by? Well, I, I, I was thinking about this question and I'm going to give you an answer from when I was a kid, which is about, I don't know, 12, 13. So I was just becoming a teenager probably. And then maybe another one from when I was like 18, 19, 20. When I was 11 and 12, for example, I was, um, I loved uh, Gary Glitter. Can you remember Gary Glitter? I can, yeah. <laughs> now, you see, <laughs> maybe the rest of you around the world, I don't know if you know this, because he was, a, he was a, 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 a rock star and he was called Gary Glitter because he used to wear, he looked a little bit like Tom Jones, I think, didn't he, really? He was like... It was also, I think, partly modelled on Elvis Presley because he or had modeled hair. He had like a bit of a buffy hair. hairstyle. Yeah. But he was called Gary Glitter because he used to dress in a jumpsuit that was gold or silver. 
and it was all sequins. So very you flash. can imagine it was very flashy. So it was like this, this rock star who would come on in this very glittery thing. And I remember when I was, I, I don't know how old I was, maybe I was 10 or 11. I remember having like posters on my wall of <laughs> Gary Glitter. And I, <laughs> and I love Gary Glitter. Now, this is an interesting thing because that was fine. My parents were fine with it. Oh, she likes Gary Glitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she loves Gary Glitter. Influenced by him. I thought he was a great guy. I thought he was really cool and everything. And then um, he he kind of dropped out of the limelight. He kind of well, that, That's faded. putting it mildly. Well, no, no, no. Well, Wait, you're, not, you're, not there yet. you're not there yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> First, like, like 10 years later, he kind of faded into obscurity. He went he out one of fashion. Of, yeah. He went out of fashion. So he was one of these pop stars who was like, he was famous like for a few years and then he kind of like disappeared. Nobody heard anything about him. And then suddenly he came back into the limelight about 20 years ago. But unfortunately it was because he had been discovered. He was, he was a pedophile, wasn't he? He was prosecuted for being yep. a paedophile. Mm -hmm. And so he fell completely from grace. He fell from grace. I'm giving you some vocabulary here. If anybody doesn't understand, then let us know. He fell completely from grace. And of course, now, although he was a major influence when I was a young girl, of course, I wouldn't want to say that he was an influence now <laughs> because he was a paedophile, yeah? And that that sometimes is a problem, isn't it? Because people that sometimes have had big influences on you, later it turns out that maybe you don't want to associate with them anymore because of past behavior that you were unaware of at the well that time. brings that brings up another interesting topic that we wanted to focus on and that's the idea of ca of cancel culture which has become a buzzword or a buzz expression these days in the news because that's effectively what happened to gary glitter now he was legally found guilty so he was found they found things on his computer Mm -hmm. So he was prosecuted and found guilty as being a paedophile. I think Although, he went to prison as well, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, go to prison? I think he did. Uh -huh. But there have been people, and you mentioned the royal family before, that's quite topical, who have kind of been cancelled by rumours without actually um, having gone to court and being mm -hmm. found guilty. And that's where the idea of cancel culture comes from when an influencer or a famous person is criticized heavily for doing something negative then they and the same expression that lynn used before that i put in the chat they fall from grace so they stop becoming famous maybe they lose their income they can't get work and that's happened to many celebrities and famous people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jk rowling was criticized for being anti um uh trans from the trans community mm -hmm. bill from cosby kevin spacey the comedian kevin hart obviously prince andrew mm -hmm. um louis ck very famous american comedian that i absolutely loved for ages and then suddenly um it was in the news that he was also accused of being um a paedophile or he actually admitted to underage sex or something so this whole idea of cancelling people mm -hmm. that were in the limelight that were very famous is cancel culture and, but that has that? a problem doesn't it because i mean i feel uncomfortable saying i love gary glitter and his music <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm not thing, actually not I mean, sure. I'm not actually sure. I don't think I can remember what his music was like. But imagine that I still liked his music. Do you continue to like his music? Do you want to be in my gang? That? That <laughs> Do you want to be in my gang? That's right. That was his. But, song. but that's Do you the want thing. To be in my, gang, I, my guy. <laughs> I struggle. We've lost the audience singing those songs <laughs> in the 70s, Lynn. But that's it, isn't it? I mean, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. I uh -huh. love Michael Jackson. Yeah, me too. Uh -huh. Do I me stop too. enjoying his music? Mm -hmm. It's an awkward question. It's difficult. 
Mm -hmm. Because then, of course, if you were influ, it depends what the influence was, doesn't it? Because if the influence was his music, then you say, of course, I'm influenced from his music. But it's more than that, isn't it? Because you're looking up to him as a role model. And then, of course, when you see that he's not a role model for behavior, then that has an effect on your influence, doesn't it? But so it, it's, it's not, it's... it goes further than that because mm -hmm. if I watch a film with Kevin Spacey, it does go through my mind that mm -hmm. he was accused again of pedophilia. So I, I don't look at him in the same way as an actor with the same respect as I did before he was cancelled. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. We've got some comments coming in. What does Hemmer say? Teenagers tend to be more influenced by their friends. She just had some typos. She checked that afterwards. Yeah, she wanted to write there. She she was having yeah. typing errors. But yeah, yeah, I think that's true, that teenagers mm. tend to be more influenced by their friends. That's true, more than their families. Uh -huh. Like Lynn was yeah. at university. Exactly. And like my daughters are with me. <laughs> I'm realizing it's I just didn't normal. have any influences in my childhood. <laughs> Oh, did you not? <laughs> is that you in the picture, uh, Jose Antonio, or is that someone you're influenced by? <laughs> <Just curious. laughs> yeah. Uh, he fell out of grace. Okay. Or fell from question. grace. Fell from grace. From grace. Mm -hmm. It's in the uh, chat, Eduardo. If you look in the chat, I wrote it earlier. Mm hmm um you, you can't <laughs> write and listen to us at the same time but that's not a problem because you can catch up with the recorded version on our youtube channels can't you <laughs> <laughs> you can watch it again if you want yes that is jose antonio in the picture oh wow jose antonio Impressive. are you fa are you famous what are you doing there are you dancing he's, he's dancing yeah you're dancing what kind of a dancer are you i want to know is that is that for a performance uh-huh let us know. Rolando, ah. I would say sometimes we're influenced by ourselves. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that's true. By our thoughts, uh -huh. are we? And we follow mm -hmm. what they tell us what to do. They follow, we follow what they tell us to do and not what we are sure we have to do. Yeah, that's that's tr that's very profound, Rolando. I agree sure, with that. I'm not sure I quite understand that. I, would say I think sometimes... it's that you have, it's like the point that Eduardo, I think, made earlier, that you have certain biases and prejudices and you believe what you want to believe, right? Our thoughts, we don't realize it, but they're pushing us in one direction, yeah? And sometimes maybe it's not the direction that we, you know, maybe... It's not the direction that we should be going to, but our thoughts sometimes deceive ourselves too. I uh -huh. think it's very important to keep an open mind, keep yeah. an open mind and listen. We're not listening enough and we should be listening to people even if we don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. We should be listening and thinking what other people are saying, even if we don't agree with their opinion and always mm -hmm. keep an open mind. I thought it was salsa. Yeah, salsa dancing. Nice. Well, I have to say, Jose Antonio, you look brilliant, salsa, salsa dancing. I think you would be a big influence on me if I wanted to start salsa dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a role model. Because I, you would be a role model. I would try to get into that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit old for that, but, you know, who? <laughs> it looks I super cool. It if I really tried to cool. get into that outfit, I would lose all credibility. <laughs> <laughs> Christine um, has a question. Oh, yes, Christine. Let's mm -hmm. see. Could we use the expression to debunk a myth? Yes, in a figurative mm -hmm. sense, when you stop looking up to that person. Yeah. 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 Definitely to debunk uh, her, yeah. to debunk a, a, a myth. Because you there, it's true that people like Michael Jackson, there's a whole myth around them, isn't there? You know, especially, uh, especially amongst these celebrities sometimes. And when you actually see behind the scenes that actually it's not as fantastic as it appears to be, then, um, then yeah, you're debunking a myth. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So um, let's bring this up to date. Who are your major influences now mm -hmm. and for what? 
areas for what things so we discussed mm -hmm. before the different way that we can be influenced mm -hmm. and in the different areas for example music fashion film etc who are your influences, Lynn? And we want to hear well, from you in the chat as well. Yeah. Well, I when I was thinking about this, I was thinking that, okay, when I was a teenager, it was more like fashion and dress sense and music and tastes. And I was, when I went to university, I think my opinions were quite influenced um, by, by the discussions that were going on at university. So I, I do think that when you're at, when you go to a university and you start thinking about politics and you start thinking about feminism and you start thinking about all of these like sort of and philosophy, yeah, and life and you think about lots of things like that. And I and I am sure that when I was at university, I was my opinions were influenced by especially my lecturers and mm -hmm. and possibly others, my, my peers around me. And when I've got older, I realize I don't think I'm influenced by dress anymore. I think I've kind of You've got your own into, style. I've got my own style. And I, I mean, I'm sure that occasionally I see somebody and I think, oh, that looks really nice. That would be nice. I'm sure I'm inspired by others, but I don't think I'm influenced by others. Right. I might, I get inspiration from seeing things that I like and I might want to try to imitate in some way, but I don't think I'm really heavily influenced. But when it comes to opinions, I was thinking about this and I was it wasn't something I wanted to admit because I think when you get older like my kids think that I should like have you know I should know the answers but I don't <laughs> and, um, and I think that um, I'm probably as equally influenced by other people's opinions now as I was when I was younger but I think I expose it's like what you said to try to keep an open mind for example now I think I'm very influenced by the podcasts that I listen to I listen to a lot yeah. of podcasts and I hear people who through podcasts you meet people or you hear people you don't know them but you hear people that in my walk of life, in my area here, I would never have contact with these people. But I hear them speak on podcasts and it really opens my mind a lot, you know. Um, and so I think I am influenced quite heavily by what I hear on podcasts. The difference is, is that I choose the podcasts that I want to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find them, you know, but I do find podcasts from people who are comp that I never, th I never thought of before, you know. So you do vary the people you listen to. You don't follow yeah, one because, particular. Yeah, I'm not following. Or... I'm not following a podcaster. So, for example, one of the podcasts I listen to a lot is Hard Talk from the BBC, and that's like interviews with different people. And Steve, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen, Steve Sacker, Stephen Steve Sacker. Sacker. Uh -huh. And um, there's another, there's a lady who does it as well, whose name I've, I've just lost, but it might come back. But anyway, they do interviews every couple of days. And, um, and for example, just a couple of days ago, they did an interview with, or he did an interview with um, Betancourt, um, who, if anybody's listening from Colombia, I think somebody's listening from Colombia, she is now a presidential candidate, Isabel Betancourt. And she was this lady who was kept in captivity for, I think, five or six years by the FARC. And then she was like chained and she was in the jungle for six years and they kidnapped her. And then she was released in, I think it was 2008. And then she went out of the spotlight for 10 years because she wanted to reconnect with her children. She, she tell, is, tell, I, I heard all this, she's telling this on the podcast. And then she now is standing for election in Colombia as the presidential candidate. And when I hear people like that and I hear their experiences, these are people I would never hear. And it makes me reflect a lot on attitudes and, um, and I don't know, I get, I, I, I am influenced by these things. She was talking on the podcast a lot about <clears throat> reconciliation 
and about the process to forgive your captors or the process for reconciliation and mm -hmm. why it's important. And those are kind of things that I've never thought about before. But when I hear people talking about them, I get quite heavily influenced by them. I think so, it's important to realize that our our opinions change over time and mm -hmm. we're not the same people we were five or ten years ago. So it's completely normal as you develop as a person that your opinions and your beliefs are going to change, mm -hmm. um, whoever you're influenced by. But again, it all goes back to having that open mind um, mm -hmm. and listening and being aware of different opinions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's um, like Christina when she said that, you know, she was influenced by this Italian girl who's the fencer. I mean, like, yeah. when do you come into contact with people like that? So it is, you know, and they do influence you. They inspire you, you know. So, I mean, that's the wonderful thing about social media and, and the internet, of course, is that we can have contact with these people. And I read a book. I mean, Christina's comment about that fencer winning the, the medals reminded me of a book I read a few years ago about a man who was paralyzed. He dived um, in in a beach and he he broke his spine and he was paralyzed from the neck down and he sailed around the world on his yeah, own mm -hmm. and he sailed around um and it just amazed me of like mm -hmm. i complain about silly things every day and mm -hmm. there's this guy who you'd think wouldn't want to live anymore mm -hmm. but he's gone out he's learned how to sail a boat and he's gone around the world um it's by amazing. himself and he can't mm. move his body i mean how amazing how amazing mm. is that? well interestingly enough because eduardo has just asked he i think he's asking me yeah uh tell us about the podcast you listen to or maybe you as well apart from your podcast <laughs> thank you eduardo um, for, yeah for the publicity uh-huh um the what there's a podcast that i also like to listen to and i find it very inspiring and it's called outlook and it's also from the BBC. And they are true stories of ordinary people. And um, when you mentioned the man who dived, I think a few months ago, there was a podcast from Outlook. And it was another man who had dived into a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he, did, he, he made a mistake with the shallow end and the deep end. <laughs> Yeah. And he was he was about to be married. He was a successful sportsman and he dived in and he basically broke his neck completely and he nearly died. And on this podcast, he is talking about his process and what he learned from his accident. And it's a fascinating podcast to listen to. Mm -hmm. And um, and you learn a lot from that as well, you know. These are situations that I hope, you know, God forbid, I hope I never have to deal with something like that myself. But it's absolutely inspiring to hear yeah. um, those things from people. And then they're very, they are influential in my attitudes to life, those, those kind of stories. Uh -huh. And going back to what we we're talking about before with the news and being influenced and changing your opinions, um, I think it's important to listen to as many different political beliefs as possible, different political thought processes, and then make up your own mind. Take in all the information and then decide for yourself because I think more and more it's getting difficult to find unbiased news. I think every every news channel, every news outlet, maybe apart from podcasts, has an agenda. And when you look at TV news, you look at newspapers, you look at other news outlets, they're very agendered. They're very um, kind of focused on one particular political belief. But I will recommend a podcast to Eduardo and the rest of you that I like. It's The Week Unwrapped and... It's a magazine that has independent journalists and they don't necessarily talk each week about a news story that's very popular. They look for news stories that don't get the headlines, that don't make the news, but are important. Why haven't these news stories been reported? And they examine news stories from a very unbiased um, perspective. So that's one podcast I really like.
Mm -hmm. I've just, um, that podcast, I've just been, if I've been pulling faces, I don't know, I couldn't see on the screen. I was looking on Google and I'm just posting now to the chat. That's the podcast from the BBC about the man who, is that in the chat now? Yeah. Yeah, I put it earlier yeah. on, the one that was... No, yeah. I've just put uh, BBC programs, the one at 8.52. Yeah, is that? Oh, did you just look for it? Did you? No. It's in there, I think, in the chat. Yes, I've, it's in the chat um, there, Edward, Eduardo. Yeah, and the... um, that's a link to the podcast that I was telling you about, the the, paral the guy that got paralyzed. Very inspiring story. Uh -huh. Jefferson says, I think people are influenced by what they want to become or what they want to achieve. Mm hmm you don't have clarity about what I would like to achieve it's easier to get influenced by the wrong people on the other hand if I have clarity I'll be influenced by the person I want to become I think people are by what they want to become a few English there things there Jefferson to, to watch out for I think people are influenced by what they want to become or what they want to achieve in, in infinitive. Mm -hmm. If I don't have clarity about what I would like to achieve, it is easier to get influenced with a D by the wrong people. Exactly. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. And on the other hand, if I have clarity, I will influence by the person that I want to. I will be influenced. I will be influenced by the that's person the passive. That I, want I will to be influenced by the person that I want to become. Yes, and that's you're, where you you're, find you're right. Models. That's true. Yes, that's true. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's happened to me. I I have a goal. I want to get somewhere, and I look for people mm -hmm. who will help me to reach my goal because mm -hmm. nothing is really a hundred percent new. Most things have been no. done before. You can adapt things. Mm -hmm. So if you find someone who's had success, someone you admire, someone you look up to, as mm -hmm. that phrasal verb again, and you follow them, they will help you to to get to your goal, as Jefferson that, said. That's true. Uh -huh. And Christine says, these strong-minded people are a case in point of resilience. She's referring to the these divers and the, the, the Italian girl who is a fencer. I don't know how I'd react if I found myself in those extreme situations. No, absolutely, absolutely true. They are a mm -hmm. point of resilience. Uh -huh. yeah. But I think they serve as well. They remind us don't they that um i mean sometimes that life requires resilience i think they remind us that we have to be resilient don't they so so that's very important those are positive influences to us because they make us more prepared for our own lives and the unexpected things that can happen in our own lives uh -huh. That's why okay. it's important to look up to people who you admire and who you trust. And I think it's important to have role models in life, even when you do get older. It's nice to have role models mm -hmm. so that you can have constant improvement. Who's your biggest role model, Craig? You. You're one oh, of my thank role you. models. You know who my no, role model is? Let me explain. <laughs> He's joking. <laughs> I'm You're not joking, joking, aren't you? I know, really? I want to explain. Okay. I have a lot of respect and time for people who... I have a curiosity about learning. And I think ah. also the people who are with us and watching now, they're mm -hmm. watching because they want to improve their English. They're curious and they want to develop themselves and improve. And I think every day we have to try and learn new things and develop as people. And that's, mm -hmm. I do admire you as a teacher and I admire you as a person. That's 100% oh, uh, true. <laughs> thank you. I was going to just say who my biggest role model is. I want to say Prince Andrew. Program. <laughs> no, it's my it's my mum. My mum is oh, my really? biggest oh, that's role lovely. model. My mum is ninety two, and and she, you know, the older she gets, the more I see. My goodness, what an example to follow! I hope that when I'm ninety two, I'm like my mum. Now that's a big change from when I was a teenager, and I didn't want to be like my mum <laughs> at all. <laughs> But now I'm older and I think, oh, please, God, please, can I be like my mom? <laughs> because sure she's handling be. old age so very gracefully and so very well. And I hope that I will be able to be similar to her. That's true. That's lovely. <laughs> I'm, sure she's, I'm sure she's very proud. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we are out of time, unfortunately. But before we go out the door, we'll just remind you where we're from and what we do in case you have never seen us before or you're watching the replay on YouTube or on um, on Facebook. So, Lynn. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm not from Blog de l'Inglés. That's my Sorry, Monica. that's my <laughs> Clicked the wrong banner, sorry. That's all right. But you know that I admire people who admit to their mistakes. So you see, I've just been admiring <laughs> you, Craig. Yeah. So um, thank you. But anyway, my my business is putitlikethis.com. And um, I'm an online teacher. I offer tailor-made courses for people to improve their English and to achieve their goals, to try to help you to be able to express yourself the way that you'd really, your own personality in English because sometimes we kind of lose our personality a little bit in the second language and so I, I try to specifically help you find your voice in English. Um, if you go to my website you'll find out more details of the kind of things I do. Okay, thank you and Craig is from Manchinenglaise.com where you can find some free material and courses to help you improve your English and we also have courses for sale if you would like to buy an audio course to take with you when you go outside or when you're walking the dog or cleaning your flat you can improve your English with our audio courses and also of course the podcast inglespodcast.com every Sunday there is a podcast that will help you with your English mm -hmm. thank you very much for okay. being with us it's been an absolute pleasure Mm -hmm. and I, I maybe if you can let us know because we've we've kind of done a different type of class haven't we today because today we've done more of a conversation class between Craig I and then of course with you guys but obviously you're you're putting in your opinions through the um through the chat file now that's good for improving your english in terms of your listening comprehension because you can hear craig and i speaking at a kind of natural speed and we're responding to each other so it's good listening practice but um maybe i don't know whether you like these kind of classes or whether you prefer more the kind of classes where we put up vocabulary and explain systematically so do give us some feedback because um, that helps us prepare our classes for you, doesn't it, Craig? Yeah, let us know what mm -hmm. you think so that we know what we can do in the future. Hema feels inspired, so thank you, Hema, for that positive feedback. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Hema. And, um, yeah, have a good evening, everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we'll see you next week. I'll be back with um, Monica, and then two weeks, uh, Lynn will be here with me again on a different topic. So um, thanks for joining and take care. Stay safe. All right. Bye Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>